Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? All right. Uh, thank you for being here. I hope you enjoy, we enjoyed your morning for Odoo Connect. Oops. For Odoo Connect, this is the first edition. And we are going to spend the next uh, 50 minutes talking about Odoo and Zero Space. But first, uh, I guess I'll wait one more minute. Please. All right. Uh, before we, we before, let me introduce myself quickly. My name is Jerry de Bonny. I come from all the way from Belgium to talk about JavaScript. And I'm kind of obsessed with JavaScript uh, since I started working at Odoo. Uh, I, I was more and more involved in the Odoo JavaScript ecosystem. Uh, this this uh, involves um, documentation, tests, the, the code source, of course, also uh, technical vision, onboarding new developer. Uh, I try to improve it and to make it better. But still a difficult uh, task, of course. And today, for the next, uh, for this talk, I'll tell you about my vision for the current state of the Odoo ecosystem. And I will explain uh, what challenges we are facing and how we are going to solve those challenges for the next uh, version. So this talk is more oriented toward the future than the past. Uh, before I get, uh, of course, this is a technical talk. I, I don't know, I, don't, I didn't know exactly know what to expect uh, coming, to the, coming up to this event because uh, it's the first edition. So I will assume that you have some knowledge of JavaScript or at least some interest. Uh, but uh, I will, uh, don't worry, I will not show you thousands of lines of code. I will, I will keep a high, high level overview of uh, what we are doing. All right, so uh, we go to the, to the future. I kind of have to tell you about the current state of Odoo. Uh, as you know, Odoo released its version 13 a few weeks ago. In my opinion, it's a pretty good release. It has uh, a lot of uh, changes in the code base, in the JavaScript code base, but uh, I will not tell you about all of those changes because most of them are kind of small and interesting to listen to someone talk for one hour uh, through bullet points. So I will tell you, I will highlight just a few changes and uh, tell you how difficult or how hard they were to make to uh, give you some perspective on the, the expressiveness of our current framework. Let's get started with the first change that I want to highlight. Odoo version 13 is now a better citizen. In version 12, uh, some requests uh, that were made by the web client were using the get method, uh, the post method, so, sorry, uh, as the HTTP communication layer. We changed those to which allows us to use uh, um, better strategies for cache control, for caching uh, assets, and uh, generating hash-based URLs. All of this made web clients much faster in some cases. For example, when you reload your web browser, it's now much faster. So this is pretty good value for, uh, for a change. It, it, um, uh, it, it, it improves the, the experience for users. And at the same time, it was not difficult to make for, a, for one simple reason. The communication layer was properly abstracted in the lower uh, level of the code base. And it, uh, since it was well abstracted away, it did not impact the rest of the code base. So changing this was uh, quite straightforward. And that's an, the next change that I want to mention. Odoo version 12 and before used uh, jQuery uh, for asynchronous work. It used the, the, the concept, the notion of deferred. That's what, uh, that, that's what it's called. And those deferred um, uh, are used to coordinate asynchronous work. And the, the Odoo client is actually very heavy on concurrency. Let me give you some example. When some user edit a form view and then changes some uh, field value, Many times, this triggers a non-change. This means that your web client needs to talk to the server. This takes some amount of time for that request to get to the server and then to come back to get some field values. 
for, for this amount of time, the user may have clicked on other field, change a different field, and other change again. Maybe he reordered its one to many uh, list view. Anything could happen. And we need to make sure that all of these changes are properly uh, man managed. You do not want those changes to interleave and to leave the, the user interface in a corrupted state. So the web client is very heavy on concurrency. And we use that deferred uh, abstraction to uh, manage that. But when we wanted to update jQuery from version 2.x to version 3, we had a big issue. jQuery 3 um, changed the semantics of their abstraction. They changed uh, the, the deferred to make it closer to the native promise API. It's a good change for jQuery, but at the same time, it was really tricky for us because our code base was really uh, dependent on, that, on the previous behavior. And this means that uh, we had to update all of our asynchronous code uh, at once to make it work with this new uh, jQuery deferred. So we decided to, to, at the same time then to stop using this abstraction, which was no, no longer useful because now all, all of your web browsers have a uh, native promise API, which is native, which is faster, and to, which will probably not change. That's a good, uh, that's a good, uh, a good uh, property for um, an abstraction. So this change took us a lot of work. It uh, um, like three or four months of work uh, just to jQuery from one version to the next. But of course, now we have the benefit of using native promise API. And this means that any new code using the using, uh, client will, uh, will use the, the, this promise API as well. Okay, so uh, that's a, an internal change, uh, but it, it's a pretty signific significant. Let's talk about other changes. As you probably saw this morning on the keynote, we introduced two new, new views, no do, uh, map view and a Gantt view. The map view, uh, the, both of, the, of those projects were very interesting because you don't, you don't often have the opportunity to start a project from scratch. Most of the time, you have in Odoo, when you work at Odoo, you have to interact with existing code. We ha you have to understand how it is uh, designed, how it, is, how it works, and then you have to make sure that it still works af after you uh, make your change. Uh, it, this, is, this was not the case for these views. The map view and the Gantt view were, pro were started from scratch. We, we do not have the history uh, making it more difficult to, to, to work on that. And for example, the map view took us, uh, the first prototype of the map view took about two hours of work. So that's really, really fast. Of course, it was as, uh, uh, not much, uh, not, not many features, but it was really uh, uh, quick to, to, um, to get started. And uh, the same, the same uh, happened for the um, GAN view. Uh, it was really quick to iterate. Uh, when, when you don't have to maintain uh, uh, you can go, go faster. And uh, this was really uh, nice to see the, the, the developer working on those projects. They could uh, make uh, some improvements, then uh, check and discuss what, what needs to be done to then iterate and maybe change again. And it, it was really uh, quite fast uh, considering the amount of work it was uh, required to do that. So this means that our views abstraction, our, our views code uh, is not so bad. Uh, it works, it, it, it's quite easy to integrate and to, cre and to create new views. That's a good point for Rodu. That's unlike the next change and, and it's the last one I want to highlight uh, today. This is a, uh, actually not one change, it's a bunch, it's a bunch of changes. Uh, in the, this screenshot shows a search panel, the left part of the Kanban view it's now available on all uh, of the user interface, uh, all, all of the multi views. It's uh, one of the new features. You may have noticed this morning that we added a lot of new features for the list views. For example, you can now um, multi you can edit multiple records at once. That's a pretty big change. You can resize columns in, in list views. That's another big change. It was, we, I'll talk about that later. 
uh, you, what, what else can you do? You can um, edit grouped list view. Well, now, when you have a grouped list views, uh, every record is still editable. It can be editab editable. You, are, you still, we improved the um, search view, the, the date filters. We made a lot of uh, small improvements in, those, in the list view, ma mainly. And uh, by contrast, uh, it's the opposite of the previous slides. The changes were so much harder to make because the code base was not designed for this. And we had to make sure that all of the, these new features interact well with the previous ones. So let me give you a, an idea of the complexity of the task uh, that uh, those features uh, have to solve. For example, a, a user can, can do a lot of, a lot of actions uh, wh which needs to work as expected. It, it, the user can maybe edit one record, then switch to um, grouped list view, then edit another record, maybe resize a column before the edition is completed, it, sh it should work, then maybe switch to the next record, may, uh, then could reorder a column, and before it's, re it's, it's done, it could edit a, uh, another record. All of those actions need to work well. And that's a key point in, uh, in what we do. It's that uh, we need to think about transitions. When you work with a Yodoo framework, you have to think about going uh, the way you, you should go from one state to the next state. You need to describe a, st a sequence of steps to um, update the user interface to go from a, a, sta a, state, a given state to another one. When the user clicks on the drop down, then you need to, it's easy for in, in this case, you need to simply display the drop down. Then when you change something, you need to instantiate a new widget. You need to put it at the correct way. But if the user needs some, some other action. And you need to coordinate all those widgets together. Then you need to make sure that the initial state matches the user, the user interface. And this way of working, of thinking in transition, I would say uh, it's about uh, imperative thinking. It's about a sequence of steps. It makes it difficult to, to add features in Odoo. So this got me thinking. We have some some changes are very easy to make, even if they look difficult, and some other changes are very difficult to make. Just resizing the columns in the, in the list view, to, it took us, uh, I don't know how many hours of work to the, uh, of discussions to make sure that this resize feature works as expected uh, for obvious case. There was always some edge case that, that, uh, that makes uh, an issue, and then you need to solve that problem you have another problem which arises uh, as a consequence. It's all the time, it's like, it's really, when you solve a problem, you have another problem which, which comes up, and then you have another one, and then another one, and it's so difficult. Why, uh, why is it so? Because we are working in a imperative, with an imperative mindset. And I, want to uh, I wanted to understand what, where that complexity comes from. Is there something wrong in our uh, way of doing? We, we man managed to have a, a really a well uh, a, a web client which works quite well, it really uh, it's quite solid, it does not crash, it's, it's solid, it's good software, but it's really difficult. So this, this slide shows you uh, some part of the code uh, which is in the action manager, and this is about notifying an action that it, is, it has been attached to the DOM, because when you work in a framework, in a widget, you, s you often need to, to be able to know when your widget is present inside the DOM, so you can measure it or you can interact with some external libraries. This is a, a, a really a, a need that our framework does not solve. So we have to, plan to add this feature back on top of the framework. This code is basically about um, go from going from the top of the component tree and then every, any, any time something changes, we need to notify recursively all of the children uh, components. And then when you, it's only half the story. You have the other half, which is about detaching your component. You need to notify a component when it has been detached. And you have 
the such complexity that you, you need to do at every level of your component tree. If one of the, these elements does not do it, every, any of its, of its children will not uh, be notified if it's in the DOM or not. So it's complex and it doesn't look right to me. When you work with other frameworks, such as React or Vue, um, it's built in. You have a lifecycle method. You have a component did mount or component will unmount method. And it, will, it simply works. You don't have to, do, to jump to hold those hoops, make it work. So that's one point. We have not enough support from our framework. It's actually quite small. It's uh, just a class, a class a definition of a Odoo class system. Then you have the uh, widget system, so utility function. It's quite small, and it does not do enough work for us. So we have to to add a lot of uh, things to add a lot of work to uh, get what we need. So that's one point. Another point is that when you look at the front end world, uh, this is an example from Vue. Uh, it's a simple snippet. It's quite simple. You describe the, your user interface. You have a template. And you say, okay, I want one component, one specific component here. And you do not need to describe a sequence of steps to get there. You do not need to instantiate manually in, at the proper timing some subcomponent. Then to append it to the DOM and then to wait for, uh, for this operation to be completed before your, your parent component is uh, appended to the DOM. It's a, it's a declarative mindset. It's a, you just declare your user interface as a function of your state. And then whenever you need to add a feature, you update this, um, this template, and yeah, maybe you update some JavaScript code to, uh, to update its internal state, and the framework will do the work of adding or removing and notifying all those same components. So it's, a pl it, it, it's, it's, much, uh, it's quite pleasant working with uh, those frameworks. And uh, I'll come back to this uh, slide. It's kind of not nice doing it in a do JavaScript land. So, at least two main sources of complexity. We think in imperative, um, with an imperative mindset, uh, we need to manage all transitions as, as a sequence of steps, and we do not have enough support from our framework. Uh, so, yeah, le, uh, the. Um, that's one uh, source of complex. That's, that's two sources of complexity, and we need some change. And let me give you a, a quote from Anthony, my uh, my boss. He told me uh, this year at my performance appraisal that Odoo is too stable. It, it it sounds good, right? If if I tell you that Odoo does not crash that much, it's 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 a good a good property. Odoo works as expected. That's good. But in, the, uh, in this quote, Anthony meant that we are still stuck in the ways of the past. And if you, work, if you ever worked with uh, Odoo JavaScript code, you, you, noticed, you probably noticed that. It's, uh, the state of the art uh, really evolved so fast these past five years, and Odoo is still stuck five, five years in the past. We're still, we're still stuck in the backbone era now that uh, people are working with React or Vue. And it's an issue because we are crumbling under our co own complexity. It's difficult to onboard new developers. They, they are scared when they see the code base because where, where should you start? It's, uh, it's uh, difficult to, to understand. Uh, you have to, to, to do so much work to add a feature. So we need uh, some change. Even though we like we use stability, we want our framework to be stable, but at the same time, we do not want to uh, to pay the cost of having a framework which is not which does not scale to la large and complex applications. So we need to change, and that's um, the topic of this section. I want to tell you about what we uh, what we want to do. We, uh, as I told you, we did not do enough work uh, at the framework layer level. We need to do more work at the, the, um, in the extra work in the upper layer. We would like a component, a decorative component system such as React or Vue. That's so, so much nicer than having to do it yourself. And we, we would like to shift the, the JavaScript framework 
to declarative mindset. We want to declare your, our user, user interface and let the framework do the work of making, the, making it happen on the, um, uh, on the screen. So, the question then arises, what do we do? We, we know what we want, but how do we get there? Should we pick a state-of-the-art, well-tested, well-known, battle-tested framework, such as React or Vue, or maybe should we make our own custom framework, which is not well-tested, which is unknown, uh, not battle-tested? I don't know what you guys think. Um, maybe you can guess the answer to that question. But I'll, let me develop first, and then I'll come back to this. What does Odoo need? Uh, this, those are some constraints given to me by Anthony. It, it still wants uh, this future system to be QWeb or an XML based. And that's very important. Uh, many applications do not have a templating system based on XML, but in my opinion, it's a very good um, advantage of working in Odoo. Your user interface is encoded in, in XML document, and you can update it with XPath, you can inherit uh, those templates, you can change it, you can, um, uh, you can store them in database, and then update them dynamically, it's very powerful. So we do not want to lose that, that good property. Another property that we want to have is we want our component system to be monkey patchable. Uh, it's kind of a dirty word, and I agree, but it's, it's the way Odoo works. Odoo works in, uh, in the, the opposite way of most applications. In Odoo, you have your uh, base add-on, which is uh, in the web client, which, which in our case, uh, the web client uh, slash web. That's, and then all of external add-ons, when you install them, can modify the, the behavior of the, the base uh, add-on uh, class and components. It's the same, actually, if you think about it, it's the same on the server side. When you have uh, some uh, model, like REST partner or uh, sale order, when, whenever you install a new add-on, it can modify those models by adding uh, new fields or um, overriding some method. And it's mon mon monkey, patch monkey patching. It's, it's really not uh, the perfect way, but it works really well for Odoo. So we still want uh, our system to be monkey patchable. And last uh, uh, request, we cannot uh, use ex external tooling. We cannot use NPM or um, the TypeScript or um, some kind of transpilation system to, to, to transpile JSX uh, files to uh, JavaScript or to, to transpile a view uh, file to JavaScript. We cannot use all of that for good and bad reason. Uh, Anthony does not, does not like that, so that's not really a good reason, but that's one reason. But also, for good reason, because we do not want to depend on external tooling, we do not want we to install those, uh, those additional uh, um, programs on our uh, production database, our production systems. If you think about it, those three constraints makes it difficult to use React or Vue. If you uh, wanted to use React, for example, you would need to, uh, to have uh, some kind of layers, tr tr translation layers between a QWeb template and a React render function. That's kind of awkward to have. If you, want, uh, if you, if you think about it, React and Vue are moving towards a functional components for good reason. The functional comp components are wonderful, but they are difficult to extend to mon monkey patch because the state of those functional components is locked inside closures or maybe inside the, the internal system of React or Vue, and it's very difficult to, to get through the, the, the abstraction to change them. So that makes it difficult. And also, no extra tooling makes it as, uh, obviously uh, not as nice to use uh, those systems. Ne next, we have nice to have properties. This is not really mandatory, but it's something that we would like to, to, to keep or to have uh, if possible. We would like our uh, framework system to work well with inheritance. Uh, the state of the art uh, moves toward composition. When you want to reuse code, you want, uh, most of the time, composition is the proper way to do it. But if you think about it again, uh, our templates are inherited. We have with, when you have XPath, 
you have, you have inherited, uh, you have sub-templates and sub-templates, and it would be really useful, it is useful, if your component system can uh, reuse those templates at the same time. So if you have uh, an abstraction which matches this inheritance system on your template. That's one point. We, we also would like template compilation on browser, and that's really powerful uh, for, the, for example, the form view, because the web client does not know beforehand what the user interface will look like. It only knows it at one time. When the user opens the form view, only then the web client fetch the description of the form view from the server, and then decide uh, how to um, translate that into a user interface. So we need that property, and we need a, it, it would be also useful to have asynchronous rendering because that's one of the few strong points of current widgets. All the current widgets have one hook, which is will start, and this hook is key to, um, to stop it user interface until it's ready. And because of, uh, thanks to that system, uh, you have a kind of a specific Odoo experience when you use the Odoo web client. Uh, you do not, do not see uh, white, white space, then, it, then we wait half a second before it's filled with data. You see, it, it waits for your data to be ready, and then only then it will display the form view, for example. And it's nice to have, and funnily enough, uh, React announced their concurrent system just a few weeks ago. So React is working on this, but it's still experimental. I, I, I believe that view three will have some kind of asynchronous feature, but it's not ready yet. So, oops, ah, sorry. Ah. <laughs> So the question, the, the, the answer to this question is that yes, we decided to make our own custom framework. We want to we wanted to experiment with adding a component system on top of QWeb. So that's what that was our starting point. We just wanted to add one directive, T component or T widget. It was named T widget back then uh, to the QWeb to uh, to let us uh, create widgets inside templates. That was the starting point, and this starting point point evolved into a full brown, but still minimalist, uh, web framework. This is w uh, what we call OWL, uh, it, which stands for Odoo Web Library. Odoo Web Library is, at, at its heart, is only a declarative component system uh, based on QWeb. That, that's, that there is not much more than that at first. And then it kind of grew, grew and became uh, more interesting, more solid uh, with time. It, wo it, works, uh, it works, so let me uh, take some, some moment to describe what OWL is. OWL is standalone, and that's, uh, in my opinion, it's a big point. Uh, it means that you can use OWL for your own projects if you want, of course, but uh, even for Odoo, it's really interesting. It means that OWL can be used for uh, all um, Odoo-related applications which are not uh, inside the web client, for example, Odoo SH could be done in OWL, or our run, runbot, or internal applications. Anything can be done with uh, just with this instead of having to um, try to extract from the current web client enough files to make it work, but it will not be guaranteed to work. So OWL is standalone. It does not depend on Odoo, even though it's built for Odoo. It's a decorative component system. It's class-based, so it can be uh, simply uh, monkey patched by just changing the prototype, its prototype. It's really plain JavaScript. It's based on QWeb. It's no nonsense. It has a lot of modern features. For example, it has slots just like Vue. Uh, it was inspired, the, the, the way to, um, to, to make generic components was inspired by Vue, and it has slots. It has reactiveness like with hooks, just like uh, now React or view uh, view tree will get the, that as well it has um, all of the modern uh, uh, good property in, in my opinion and it, all of it inside a small minimalistic framework which is named all so let me give you an example so we can uh, have a more concrete idea of what it looks like what it looks like this is a simple counter component when you click on it it increases its number that's it it's very, it's just a a demos demonstration, toy, toy example, but it's interesting to see that. It's, it's simply a subclass of, all of the old component class, and it, uh, it has a, a template. 
In this case, I define it in line, but you do not have to do that. Uh, for Odoo, we, we will still keep defining our templates in XML files, but for this uh, example, it, it's uh, in line, so uh, it's easier to, to see it. And you have, an, uh, uh, you can see you have additional directives. You have T on click. The T on directive is just uh, to, uh, uh, a new directive which is useful to bind event handlers on the click event. And what it, whenever this click handler is triggered, it will just run this code. It could be a method inside your template, your, your component, or it's just a simple inline statement which increases its value. And then you have uh, the state, use state, uh, the state uh, object. It could be just a plain object, but in this case, it uses the use state hook. The use state hook makes it reactive. So whenever the, its value is changed, Owl knows that it, it should update the user interface to, make, to match the, its, its uh, internal state. And that's it. There is nothing more to that. No, 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 no extra code for this component. Uh, it, it simply works like this. Let me show you composition. This, this is one parent component which uh, uh, imports the other component here, the counter component, with a T if uh, statement, just like uh, standard QWeb. And in this case, you can see that uh, we, we have, uh, the result is simply a, the parent component which contains a sum component. And if for some reason its flag was set to false, then of course it would destroy the counter component. It will unmount it and it will work like you would expect from um, uh, any component system. For, uh, with, uh, we, we, we have uh, some teams working on OWL and uh, I can tell you that our own internal developers, those of, uh, uh, those of them which are uh, used to React or Vue, have, have a really easy, um, uh, easy time picking up OWL because uh, it's, it's really what to expect. Performance is not the key point. It's not, it was not the goal that we had in mind when we started uh, working on OWL, but it's good to know that it's much faster than uh, the Odoo legacy widgets and it's still about the same speed as React or Vue on various benchmarking, um, uh, various benchmark. Uh, so that's good to know. Uh, it's, it's pretty, pretty good. You can try it online. So let me show you uh, maybe uh, here. You have a very grand application. In this case, uh, you can just switch between examples. So for example, let's have, let's have a look at to-do list. You can click here, and then you can try uh, uh, this framework like this. So, so hello, and then it's just a, a, a nice frame with your whole application on the right part of, um, of the screen. And you can, of course, update your, uh, your template in line. If I change the, the text here, you run it, then you get your um, updated uh, uh, application running. And it's standalone, does not depend on Odoo. Uh, uh, that's to we can tr uh, try some um, effects. For example, you have uh, here uh, transitions. It's a really live component, but you can uh, have an, an effect of uh, some basic animation. Uh, I don't know what else, you have uh, components, maybe um, responsive application, that's interesting to, to see. If, if you change uh, the, the, the size of the um, of this iframe, it will switch from uh, mobile mode to a desktop mode, and there is no code to, uh, no extra JavaScript code to do that. That's really a good use case for all, because if you think of how you would do that in standard Odoo, you would need to have some kind of listener to the width of your um, window. And then whenever you switch state, you need to destroy all of the previous widgets and then to, to, or to reposition them or to move them around to, to switch uh, manually. And it's very difficult to, to do because your, uh, your code which uh, manage this uh, switch from desktop mode to mobile mode is not aware of the specific um, widgets that is running. The, the best uh, person 
uh, that could um, uh, do, uh, describe how it should look like. It, it should be the component itself that should describe how it, it should look like in mobile mode or in desktop mode. And if you, I don't know if you can read that. Let's have a look. Here in this case, uh, this line just has a t if statement of dot is mobile. Uh, this is the environment. And this means that whenever the is mobile flag is false, then the mobile search view will uh, disappear. And whenever it's true, it will simply appear. And this means that you can add a reactive um, uh, responsivity to your application by simply modifying, modifying this template. And you do not have to fiddle with JavaScript uh, in, this case, in, this, in this example. So I think that's a pretty good um, example of the power that uh, all uh, or any actually any framework, uh, any modern framework can give you. So that's a good demonstration. All right. Uh, I think uh, Odoo version 14 uh, will be uh, the start of a new beginning for the um, JavaScript, uh, um, the old JavaScript framework. We are working on updating all of our um, current to this old framework. All new code will be uh, written with all, uh, obviously. And we, are, we have like, currently you have three teams, point of sale, discuss, and maybe BI team uh, working on, um, uh, it's been a few months, they, they started. Uh, it should land in Odoo in the next month. And at the same time, we will uh, update as much as we can from the, the, um, the Odoo web client. But for example, we'll start with the um, uh, uh, switcher, <laughs> and then uh, when, when, once, once, this is, once this is this lands in master, we'll update uh, probably at, in, uh, on, on the first top down, bottom up. Yeah, bottom up. We'll update uh, client actions. We'll update some widgets, and progressively we will try to uh, to update the whole user uh, interface to use to use all. So. It's really difficult to say before and how much time this will take because um, I, I'm not, I cannot uh, divine the future and also my um, uh, strong. So it's difficult to say. I expect this to take at least one year, maybe more, uh, but uh, the future will, t will tell us. So uh, I think I've been quite quick. So thank you for your attention. I hope that uh, this is uh, interesting to you, and I would be happy to answer your questions right now or maybe uh, in the next few days. Thank you again. I think there is one uh, question just over there. Uh, uh, there's a microphone if you, if you want. If you want. Yes? You said that this is not dependent on the other framework. Uh, yes. So, um, do you expect that people would use this like to build an SPA, say with the Django backend or some other backend? Do you really expect that that's gonna happen? Do you hope that it happens? Uh, I would hope it happens, but uh, I don't really expect it uh, for now. But even now, in my opinion, but I'm completely biased, uh, in my opinion, <laughs> it's a really, uh, really uh, good framework. It's really, it solves really well problems. And maybe w if some developers uh, uh, is used to work with uh, our framework uh, in the context of Odoo, maybe it, it, will, it will like to use it uh, for other use, but it's not really, the point for Odoo is, is not to do, to, to do that. It's still standalone. In my opinion, it will be at least in the first, um, at first, it will be used for uh, Odoo-related applications because uh, it, it will be part of the ecosystem. But maybe, who knows, someday some people will use it. I don't know. Uh, some people um, don't believe it, uh, but uh, I, I, it's, it's most likely that it, it will stay a small, uh, small framework, with, uh, not really a kind of a niche, but uh, who knows? Uh, yeah. I, I can't tell you more. It's difficult to predict the future. <laughs> well, I did have one other question. Yeah? Um, and I agree with what you said there. If, if you're used to Odoo, you know, this might nicely cross-pollinate to something else. It makes sense for if you have, a, for example, a single page application that you want to, to, have, to offer your, uh, some customer in Odoo. Uh, you can just host it on your, uh, make an Odoo add-on, 
and uh, interact directly with uh, the Odoo database, the Odoo system, without uh, having to, uh, and you can maybe reuse some components between your backend and your, uh, your, your application, it could happen. That's sort of related to my next question. Can you, do we have to wait till 14 comes out or could we, do you expect that people will build interaction with say version 12 or version 11? Oh. Uh, yeah, that's can a good you, question. Can you run both the old backbone and this side by side? If, if, in other words, if we make a custom app, a bespoke app for mm -hmm. uh, you know your internal company, yeah, would you will we be able to build it on Al instead of? Yes, you could definitely do that. Now there is a I told I gave you the um, uh, there it is. Um, this is the the Owl repository uh, for Owl. Uh, you can uh, download uh, the, the release, the last release, which is 1.0 something uh, alpha. And you can download it and, and use it uh, for, uh, for your own project. It will be uh, available to do only in the next month in master. So, uh, but you can still use it in, your, in, pre in a previous uh, version. It's, it's, it's standalone, you do whatever you want. It, just like you could use React or Vue in, uh, in Odoo. It's, it does not, uh, Odoo does not care, the, the server. So you can, you, can, you can do that. It will be available uh, in the next month, I expect, uh, in master. So one of the reasons you mentioned that you went with uh, your own framework is that you didn't want to depend on uh, other tooling such right. as NPM. Uh, well, did you, are you considering to develop, making the Odoo server uh, have such features like uh, spin up a development server that automatically refreshes the application, mm -hmm. etc., mm -hmm. so that it is uh, more convenient to use for front-end development? Yes. Um, I did it for my own uh, project. Uh, since I was working on OWL, I started making some uh, personal projects with it, just to have a feel of what it could look like. And of course, I just, uh, have, uh, I just made a small um, package, the .json uh, file, uh, with a few, um, uh, a few NPM modules such as serve and all of that, to, make, to, to have a live uh, environment and to make it worse. It's a, but it's a, it's a point. It, it does not depend on external tooling, but it means at the same time that it's easy to integrate with any other system because uh, you j just need to, uh, you can load your, tem your templates the way you want. You can um, transpile the, or, or minify the JavaScript code if you want or, or if you don't want. You can just have a, sim a simple HTML fi file with all of it in inside. You, 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 do, you, do, you do it the way you prefer. But for my own projects, I, I have a small, uh, way a smaller file to to start a project maybe uh, with uh, all that uh, all those goodies there so thank you i think i wanted to add an extra, an extra point i didn't talk about that but it's completely documented like 100 uh, percent uh, if you if you can uh, look here you have uh, components and you have uh, uh, complete documentation uh, on how it works so it's a, I think it's a good point. <laughs> All right, any other question? Well, I'll be happy to answer your question later if you want. Thank you very much again.